move on to the second session, which is a conversation with Xu Chi Tan, the president of IFOA. To give you some background, Xu Chi is the president of IFOA and a member of the presidential team. After graduating from the LSE in the early 80s, he spent the first 20 years of his career in Prudential on a variety of roles in London, Malaysia, and Singapore. These roles include CEO at Prudential Singapore and Regional Managing Director at Prudential Asia. In 2001, Xu Qi made the switch from a 20-year financial services career to pursue his lifelong passion for psychology. He took a sabbatical to complete his master's degree in social and organizational psychology at Columbia University in New York. After that, he returned to the insurance industry as the CEO of NTUC Income, which is a leading composite insurer in Singapore. He eventually became group CEO of the holiday, sorry, of the holding entity NTUC Enterprise. Uh, since 2017, Xu Qi took a break from executive roles in corporate life and spent most of his time on numerous non-executive roles, such as being a council member of IFOA and a trustee of the Singapore University of Social Sciences, just to name a few. He's a fellow of the IFOA and Royal Statistical Society and was a past president of the Life Insurance Association of Singapore. Good evening, Xu Qi. Thank you so much for taking the time to come to our annual conference. How are you today? I'm, I'm very good and very pleased uh, to meet members of uh, CAN UK. Um, I noticed that you're very active in promoting the reforms in IFOA in the current digital world. And you also urge individual actors to be the agent of change rather than the recipient of change. And I personally think that this will be a very interesting and relevant topic for our audiences. For example, uh, we've seen the digital transformation coming for a while, big data, machine learning, uh, AI, or driverless cars. And there's a challenge that digital transformation may disrupt all professions, including accountancy, management consulting, and also actuarial professions. For example, 20 years ago, Managing uh, consulting was one of the top places that graduates wanted to go to, and the value was largely driven by information asymmetry, which is harder to maintain in the current internet age, and technology may make us less relevant or even redundant in the near future. So, from your experience, what do you think is the most important mindset or skill set that we actuaries should have or develop in order to survive or thrive through this round of technology revolution? Okay, I, I, something struck me in the way you asked the question and I will answer your question on skill set and mindset uh, shortly. Yeah. You, you mentioned about, uh, I'm keen to ask you all to be agents of change. Yeah? And you have heard enough speeches from TED, from YouTube, from your CEOs, whoever, that change is a constant and we must embrace it. And it is very easy to say, you know, but, but if you are an agent of change, as opposed to be a receiver of change, it feels different, right? Because if you're an agent of change, you're in control of your destiny. But if you are a receiver of change in whatever programs you are in, in your company, and I have people with HP, Cisco, uh, and technology companies when there are a lot of change programs which often means restructuring. It's better to be an agent than to be a receiver in my, in my humble view. So you want to be, your, to be on the front foot rather than be on the back foot. Yeah, so, so that's how I, I frame it. So your, your, your specific question, your specific question is about skill sets and mindset. And, and of the two, I believe the mindset is more important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I uh, thrive in the digital uh, 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 revolution, right? Uh, and, and and you will read this in many magazines and and in a lot of literature, right? Uh, uh, but to answer you uh, very quickly, uh, we appreciate that the digital revolution and the fourth industrial revolution is here. Yeah, it's here. So, so the, in the last 100, 200 years, we are on a print-based society, which is things get distributed on paper. Yeah, on paper, it's not digitized. When things get digitized, the whole structure of the economy will change. Yeah, will change very quickly. Yeah. So the print-based 
along with industrialization of electric power, change human society. This will change the structure of all our industry. It's a question of time. And, 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 and knowledge gets updated very quickly. Yeah? Uh, so when I was a young boy, if I want to find the capital of, say, Ecuador, I got to go to a library uh, six miles from my house to find an encyclopedia to tell me who, where the capital of Ecuador is Quito. Yeah? And, and, and the library might not have the, the right book or the encyclopedia, right? But, but today you can do it very quickly in less than a second, right? Uh, but that capability belongs to everybody. So knowledge gets updated very quickly and it's democratized. Right? Uh, and the other thing is that you are going to live longer. You're going to live longer. So whatever you learn, whatever you learn today as an actuary, uh, over time needs to be updated. So for me, uh, the skill set, uh, and I'm going to talk, uh, uh, the mindset, yeah, I'm going to talk quite a few things here. Uh, your curiosity is very important. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to many books and it, and it will talk competency to survive in the digital world. So I would say curiosity. Uh, curiosity and a quest for learning. Yeah? A quest for learning. So you must be curious. And then you must have a quest for learning and experimentation. Yeah? Uh, and we are not always comfortable with that. Yeah? Uh, and I want to say something. What I share with you is based on my experience and it's based on my personality and the way I interpret the world. My answers may or may not be perfectly correct for everybody because you have a different context, a different interest, and a different... Yeah opportunity so you, you must adjust that yeah so curiosity uh, 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 learning lifelong learning and experimentation uh, that is partly about a growth mindset uh, as well as ability to adapt ability to adapt and I will also throw in uh, about courage and imagination because you got to be able to join the dots uh, according to various paradigms yeah so that is about mindset yeah? and we could drill down uh, more uh, later but on skill sets uh, we are all actuaries and our anchor our anchor uh, whether we like it or not our anchor is in mathematics statistics yeah and data mm. and the industrial revolution uh, data is the new currency data is the new gold yeah or the new oil yeah so data is very very powerful. So our ability to manipulate data in data science, machine learning and AI is an extension of our mathematics. It's not a new domain. It's an extension of our statistics and mathematics. It's just digitized based on unstructured data. Most of the things we learned in the past are based on structured data, but data has become unstructured. So in skill set, the core skill set is mathematics and statistics and uh, stochastic processes and data science. So we got to update. It doesn't mean that you have to be a specialist. We will talk about that later. But your uh, uh, and then your mindset is about curiosity. So you need to be able to wander into adjacent domains, whether they are genetics, behavioral finance, uh, or, or, uh, or, or autonomous vehicles, or health mm -hmm. ecosystem, because they eat into our domains. Yeah. Our existing domains are essentially life insurance, general insurance, and health insurance, and, and maybe risk management and investment management. So these are this 80% or 90% of us work there. But that, that safe and secure box uh, can be shaken up uh, by changes. In fact, pensions, as we know it in the UK, will gradually phase up, as we knew it, okay, and replaced by something else. So this is the digital revolution, uh, which is my main argument. The second thing is you are living longer lives. You are likely to work in different types of jobs over the next 40 or 50 years. Yeah? And then there are new things which are coming in because of the action point we are in, uh, which is about uncertainty, which is about COVID-19, which is uh, not a black thing, unanticipated. Negative interest rate and low interest rate makes our mindset and thinking about compound interest completely topsy-turvy and then there's climate risk which is a new risk factor so so we are going to a world of uncertainty so a, a, a different way of handling about it eh, about judgment is required eh. uh, so I, I am 
I'm saying a lot in this short reply, but we can expand to it because I'm eager to tell you that the ability is not to say that this is the answer and therefore it must be like that. But some of the eternal truths of the last 2,000 years are still uh, important uh, about work, about keeping your minds open, about and all that. But you, you must be able to be uh, a good judge for yourself and be very self-aware uh, about your interests, uh, about your goals, uh, and, and, and play this game well. Yeah? So that mindset is quite important. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Shuchi. This is very helpful. So my takeaway is that curiosity and the continuous learning are the key key things. Um, so one of the comments I heard um, uh, from, from, from the actress working for big organization is that um, you, you were specializing in one area and then it may be more and more difficult for you to be involved in a bigger picture unless you go for the managerial route. However, there are only limited number of senior management roles in any organization. So if an actuary can't get the support directly from his line manager, what would be your suggestion for these actuaries? Yes. Uh, so so uh, firstly, uh, you must know yourself. Yeah? Uh, uh, what is your interest and what you're good at? Yeah? Uh, a technical role can be very interesting. Yeah? A technical role, uh, a reserve function role can be very interesting. Uh, and a manager role in an insurance organization or in a partnership can also be very interesting. Uh, what is right for you and how badly do you want it? If your boss, and it's not necessarily your direct boss, nah, it could be your boss boss mm. or the one with the chief actually. Mm -hmm. So, your, so you, you, mm. there is a question of desire, right? Uh, somebody... Uh, like Cherry might want to be something in the consulting world. She might have a, a goal. But others may want to be more technical. And, and you can't say which is superior. It depends on your interests. Yeah? And a technical role in itself doesn't mean that you stop learning. Yeah? Because your, your work is going to change. You could be a competent reserve function, uh, actual function holder. Or you could be a virtuoso. Or you could be a proficient uh, uh, function holder, or you could be a master. So you look at Bruce Lee or Ip Man, right? Uh, so a mm -hmm. master can handle 10 opponents in one go, right? So are you yeah. a master? Or, in a technical role, you can be a master, right? Uh, whether yeah. it is IFRS or, or it is about uh, estimation of liabilities. Uh, and are you curious enough about climate risk or sustainability? Are you... Uh, do you understand the inspiration of regulations as well as negative interest rates? What are the Americans doing and what are Europeans doing? So even in technical roles, there are, there are still many uh, subtleties which you can be a master and be interesting. Uh, but I think I encourage you not to be stationary even in technical role. But let us assume that you want to be a CEO or, or whatever you want to be. Ah, because many... Uh, of your generation, uh, of your age group, uh, I, I speak what I speak because I'm in my 60s, right? But many in your age group may, in, in, as in Confucius say, there are different stages of our life, right? You, you now are in a building stage, yeah? you, you have a target you want to. So any best thing, but how strong is your appetite, yeah? Because mm. if you have a clear goal, a clear goal, uh, and you're willing to be focused on it, I'm very sure you'll get it. Nice. Uh, whether you want to be the chief of Asia, or you'll get it. Yeah. Then it's a question of being visible uh, to the people who make decisions. The, that is well being using your personal resources to attract the, the ether from the air, to build connections. Uh, you cannot say that my boss, there are only limited number of roles. Right? And, but it's a function of how imaginative and creative you are to position yourself uh, uh, to create opportunities. When I was at Prudential, uh, I, I, I was, uh, I, I joined in 1981 and I passed my exams quite quickly, but I was the earliest on my grade. I was able to, my English was very poor and, I, and they had to send me to an English program to get my uh, diction right in, in a school for about a few months. Yeah. After I qualified, after I qualified. And uh, they, I, I, I learned 
uh, virtual C, which is the language at the time, and I could do profit testing very quickly uh, for investment link programs, for unit link products. And also then I wrote a, a fairly uh, uh, advanced paper on profit testing for traditional products. Uh, and, and as a result, I caught the extension of uh, very senior actuaries, chief actuaries and deputy chief. And they were sort of uh, my mentors and I'm still in touch with them. Eh? Uh, they're in the 80s and 70s. And, and therefore you progress. Yeah? And, 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 and then some of them, uh, then eventually I went to Malaysia and all that. So all of us have different pathways. Yeah? So your, it depends on your desire. Mm -hmm. And also depends on how clear your goal is, right? Because you want a manager role and you, and, because if you have the desire, you'll, you'll build the capabilities. You'll build the capabilities. Uh, but that, as I caveated earlier on, is a function of your personality and your context. Not everyone is going to be lucky, uh, uh, but my advice would apply to more than 60 to 70 or 80%. Because there are other types, personality types, because I'm into psychology and personality. Uh, it is not about uh, driven by goals like that. Yeah? They are more organic and they are more go by the flow. And there is nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. And there are enough successful, there are people who are successful who are like that. So my advice to you is contingent on my own framing. You're, you have your own framing in your 30s, in your 20s, which you are mostly in that age. And you, you, but, and you will take it differently. Uh, but desire what I call the two meta skills, uh, uh, clarity of purpose, your goal, and mm -hmm. your drive and focus. If you have this two, you will be resourceful enough, you will network, you will learn new skills, you will learn how to communicate, all that, and everything falls into place. But you must have those two meta skills. Okay, thank you, Suchi. So um, my takeaway is that we should first find out what our passions are at work and then become visible and being imaginative and creative at work.